Bridgewater football opens ODAC play with a 30-28 to win at Guilford. Probably the most exciting game since I got here, so it's something we could talk all day about it. But I guess we'll, we'll start at the end and then work backwards a little bit. Uh, you're up two points. Gary Ramey almost sacks a quarterback around midfield with 30 seconds left. Somehow escapes it, throws up a jump ball that they catch down at the 14. So it looks like you're maybe set up to lose on a chip shot field goal after really an incredible play like that. Uh, Guilford decides to run another play. They've had some issues kicking the ball, so you can certainly understand the decision. Quarterback, after a little bobble rolls left, he's got timeout, so he could throw it away. He could get sacked. Guilford's probably still okay. Tries to throw back across the field, and Dustin Green makes the game-winning play, a huge interception for you, and just cap a crazy finish. The good thing about this business is people forget the details. Uh, the bottom line, it's going to be a two-point win from now and beyond. Uh, I, I do think this, uh, yeah, it was a finish. Uh, sometimes, you, sometimes you have the wand and you use it in sports and sometimes you don't. Uh, it, I, I worry about coaching my own team, not theirs, but I, I do think that there were a couple things that happened you know, in, in those last sequences. Things didn't go perfectly for us down the stretch. Getting that PAT block to go down one when we should have tied the game. Uh, our kids kept playing, got a big interception, turned around, and. You know, we had our backup kicker drill a 41-yard field goal into the wind. And after that little bit of a Hail Mary, you're right. That play should have been second and 28 from the 50, and it was not, you know, based on, on the jump, the, the, the grenade that he chucked down there that was caught down at the 14. But the bottom line is our kids kept playing hard. Uh, they made a call, didn't totally execute it. We got pressure on the kid, and, and certainly he made a decision he wanted back. But uh, I do think the, the neat thing about that game was it was a fourth-quarter game, which I think – I'm hoping we continue to win games. If we do, they're probably going to be fourth quarter games uh, just based on the talent pool and level of competition that we're playing. But I do think this, uh, you know, our kids kept playing hard. And I, I do think this, if you continue to play hard, usually the game comes back to you. And it did on fr that Saturday for us. You hit on what I was going to mention next. Uh, you trailed by seven midway through the fourth quarter and your kids made some big plays. Dakota Schrader catching the touchdown pass his second of the day from Jace Scroggins to seemingly tie it up. And as you mentioned, had a PAT blocked, you needed to get the ball back. Braden Thompson makes an interception around midfield, and you mentioned it, Logan Wise handling place kicking for the first time in his career, drills a 41-yarder with room to spare. Uh, so really, your, your guys made plays when the game was on the line, even before the crazy ending. Yeah, and I think they did, and probably in every phase. I think there were times, uh, you know, I punted the ball from the 31-yard line. Now it was fourth and 21. You know, we put them inside the 20, and our defense did the job. I mean, they, they gave us a three and out. I think our offense, at times, they stepped up. They needed to complete. I remember going down in there uh, right before Dakota made that catch, discussing with the defensive coaches, here's how I'm going to manage timeouts if this gets under four minutes. And, and we didn't need to. So I do think that's the neat thing about that game is that uh, there wasn't one individual or one group. I think there were a number of individuals in all three groups at time, critical times, contributed plays. Uh, my hope is, is that, hey, we get into another fourth quarter game here on Saturday. Um, I have a group of kids that say, I've been here and I managed it. Uh, we were in a fourth quarter game a month ago against Stevenson, and we didn't manage it. We didn't make the place down the stretch to, to win a game against a good football team, and I think that's going to have to be our method of operation. Uh, my hope is is that the experience we had down at Guilford is something we can draw on and, and, and use the, the, the mental toughness our kids are developing again. Well, you, you were facing a team that averaged 61 points a game coming in, and until the final kneel down, every single second half drive you took inside the 30. Now, it, part, part of the reason you were down is those first three drives only yielded three total points, and you mentioned the one time you got pushed back and had to punt, but your team really controlled the pace. I think you had 37 minutes of, of possession. You really controlled the game, and now as you head into you know, three straight weeks, you're going to be facing the three most recent conference champions, mm -hmm. teams that scored points against you last year. You're going to have to do that. You're going to have to control the ball. You've scored at the end of the first half the last two games, which is big. So you're really showing that you can control the game and dictate the pace in these games. I, I do think that. I think you've got to know who you are. And, and I think as we sat here and tried to evaluate that, and certainly I'm trying to be a better head coach and let, let my assistants handle play-by-play -play strategies, and I'm going to try to manage a big picture. But I do think sometimes playing good defense involves playing good offense and the right type of offense. And you're right, the, the WNLs, the Guilfords, the Ham Sydneys of the world, their offenses don't hurt you when they're on the sideline. And we went in there knowing that was going to be, we're going to try to control the tempo, control the pace. Uh, 
in this modern era of fast break football, that maybe isn't who we are. Now, from an offensive point of view, do we, know, do we need to get more efficient uh, inside the 30-yard line? There's no question. Uh, I don't watch a lot of football on TV, but I watched the Ohio State-Penn State game on Saturday night, and you know there were some trips inside the 30 that Penn State wished they had managed a little better earlier in the game because eventually that will come back to bite you, and, and we're well aware of that. Uh, we have to switch gears here. It's a real challenge for our defense, particularly as they move into uh, – they go from a team that's going to be run and gun and pass it and chuck it, and now they got somebody that's going to come in and, and try to run it right down your throat in Washington and Lee. So big challenge ahead of us, but I think that's what good teams do. They play different teams. Uh, defense is defined differently on a week-to-week -week basis, and we got to be ready for this challenge. But then also from an offensive point of view, we need to be able to step up and help them, and that means control the – control the ball, uh, control time of possession, but ultimately offense is about points because time of possession and field position are meaningless statistics if you're not changing the scoreboard with them. So you face Washington and Lee the first of two straight home games. We know the offense they run, but they have a new head coach. He did play in, was an assistant in the system. Uh, they lost last week to Randolph-Macon. Randolph-Macon, who's looking pretty strong, was able to shut down that offense in the first half. But we know the danger from Josh Brees. He had some big runs in the first half. He, he can hit you with a big play. They'll throw over the top after setting you up with the option for a while. Are they going to be the same this year with a new coach? And sort of what do we expect from that game this year? It's the same offense, same people, a lot of the same offensive linemen. And, you know, I got a lot of respect for that tailback. I mean, anybody that broke Devon Cruz's records in 11 games, and Devon Cruz set those records in 13 games back in the day, um, that kid's pretty good. I mean, he had more yardage rushing as an individual than Mary Harden Baylor had in total offense against Mount Union last year in the playoffs. So, yeah, it is a big challenge for us, but you mentioned Randolph Macon. Uh, they held the ball for 41 minutes. And they kept that offense off the field. Uh, it's got to be the same objective on our part. And uh, as I mentioned before, you know, the, the game changes on a week-to-week -week basis. Uh, you know, Washington Lee, they don't like – they're not a catch-up football team, but they're also a team you don't want to be down 10 to because 10 to them is 30 to Guilford. So, you know, we've adjusted. Uh, it's going to take tremendous discipline on the defensive point of view. And what I like about their defense is – you know, everybody said they're just smart kids. Hey, they're smart, good athletes. They keep things in front of you. They don't beat themselves. And when you look at point totals, what they're giving up per game, anything you get from on Washington and Lee on offense will be earned. You know, they don't give you gifts.